So the gospel reading today was that uh, they brought a man to the Lord. He was blind and could not speak. Two, two major disabilities. And simply the Lord healed him. So the blind man could see and uh, he could speak. And of course the multitudes were amazed. They were amazed. And they said, could he be the Messiah? So this was this week's reading. Last week's reading, similar amazing miracle. The paralyzed man who could not move and one word from the Lord. And he was healed and could stand up and could walk. And Who was watching all this? Of course, the crowd may have been changing, but the regulars who were there all the time were the disciples. They saw this amazing set of miracles happened time after time after time. For three years, they witnessed these amazing miracles and the amazing teaching. And after three years, and before the Lord ascended to heaven, he said to, to them, your, your training is, is finished. Now into action. Go. It's an order. Go. Make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded. There was a series of, of orders from the Lord. And then they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Of course, they needed the, uh, the charge in order to fulfill all this impossible duties and we know how far they traveled and how hard and how much they suffered it was an, an amazing and we call them my our masters our lords they were amazing people and they preached and their preaching was supported by miracles and the lord told them that you will do you will do miracles to prove the message that you are preaching and the outcome of all this is that Christianity spread very fast, very fast indeed, across uh, the world. Our masters, St. Peter and St. Paul. Well, how did they preach? They spent all their lives, they, forgot, they stopped caring about themselves. The life from then onwards was about serving the Lord and serving people. No, the I did not exist in their dictionary anymore. So what did they preach? How did they preach? Well, we actually know how they preached because they wrote down what they preached. Three main uh, themes that carried on throughout the preaching of the apostles. Number one, they preached the resurrection. The, re the resurrection of the Lord was number one uh, in, in all their preaching. They were beaten up by the Sanhedrin council. Stop talking about resurrection. We can't. We saw him. We saw the Lord. We saw the risen Lord. We touched him. We spoke to him. We heard him. We cannot stop talking about the resurrection. As simple as that. And St. Paul said... May I know him and the power of his resurrection. The resurrection has got power. Mystery. It works through the children of God and it works through the church. The number one message from the uh, disciples was the power of the resurrection. Number two, repentance. The message was from the disciples, repent. Well, when we search ourselves, we know what the problems are. We really know. And we know the areas that we need to tackle, without doubt. But sometimes we just turn a blind eye. But deep down, we know what needs to be done. And the Holy Spirit, again, the theme of the preaching. The, the Holy Spirit supports us. In repentance, the Holy Spirit, no matter how hard our hearts, the Holy Spirit can work within us to change. 
A woman came to Abuna, not in this church. A woman came to Abuna and said, well, I've listened to all these sermons you keep giving, but I'm not changing. I'm attending all the meetings, but I'm not changing. Well, the Abunas have the Holy Spirit in them, and there was this inspiration from Abuna. Instantly, he said, well, who are you living with? I'm living with my boyfriend. Well, have you made a commitment? Are you, what are you going to do? Well, he said, he loves me and I love him. And as long as we love each other, what is marriage? Marriage is a piece of paper. So, so we just carry on. And what do you say, Abuna said? There was silence. She didn't answer. She looked saddened. Well, you have a decision to make. You really have to consider what the next step should be, but you have to make a decision. She looked saddened. She turned her back, and she left the church. Did she know what she has to do? Yes. Did she plan to do something? No. Faced with this simple fact, she decided to leave the church. We are reminded of the story of the rich man who came to the Lord. And the Lord said, he loved the money. He loved his money. And the Lord said to him, give to the poor. He was saddened. It says in the Bible, he was saddened. He didn't want to give his money. So, but sadness is not enough. It is about changing the heart. And the Holy Spirit can help us. But we have to do something. Doing nothing is wrong. Doing something and we ask for the help of the Holy Spirit? Yes, that's the right way forward. And then the, the apostles keep on the same theme. When we repent, the mind is reprogrammed. There is a new program in the mind. We follow what God wants us to do, not the way of the world. It really is 180 degrees. With repentance, we move on from thinking like the world thinks to thinking like the Lord wants. Big change. Again, the Holy Spirit will work with us. We cannot do all this on our own. The Holy Spirit will help us with that. And then St. Paul says something beautiful. He says, we are being renewed day by day. Oh, that's, so it's not, it's not a, a, a fait accompli. There is growing process. Every day we grow. Every day we grow. As long as the mindset is where it should be, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we grow inwardly every day. The resurrection, the repentance, and then we, we come across, we come to this lovely man. Here he is. Who is he? Do you know him? Abuna Tadros Malati. The third theme of the, of the apostles was the certainty that our life, uh, our eternal life is with the Lord. The certainty that our eternal life with the Lord. By the way, we are all here on temporary visas. We are all here. We all here only have visitor's visa. Life on earth is no more than an introduction. Life on this earth is no more than... We are, again, this is a biblical expression, we are citizens of heaven. Our, our permanent residence is not on this earth. Our permanent residence is up there in heaven. The certainty of this. So we lead a life of repentance. We continuously ask for the power of the Lord. No, having the certainty that our place is prepared in heaven. So many times in the Bible this is emphasized. A woman came to Abuna Tadros. And she said, am I really going to go to heaven? Really, really, am I going to heaven? Again, there is this inspiration of the Holy Spirit inside the Abunas, and I repeat that, they do have the Holy Spirit. 
she had her little girl with her. She was about 12 or 13. So inspiration from the Holy Spirit, he looked at her and he said, well, your daughter comes back from school, knocks at the door. Mom, would you let me home or not? Or do I have to go and look for another home? If your daughter says that to you, what would you say? You say, of course. This is my home as much as your home. This is your home. Come in. Come in. If she rings you after school and says, do you really have a place in your home for me? And mom will say, of course. You are my flesh and my blood. Of course. My home is your home. Abuna asked, would you consider it an insult? If your daughter tells you words like this, of course, I'll be insulted. It is my home as much as her home. And do you know that our Lord loves us more than we love our children? True? True. Our Lord loves us more than we love our children. So the outcome would be, as we leave this temporary uh, stay on this earth, we are met by the Lord. And the word he, Abuna Tadros, used, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to your home. Welcome to your home. And this is really our hope. This is our hope. Repentance. No. Resurrection. Repentance. And the certainty of the world to come. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.